This video is sponsored by Florida Candles. Use our code FASTPASS 20% OFF to get 20% off your next purchase. We already talked about some of the islands and buildings that Disney abandoned, but there are still many more remnants of attractions, rides, and buildings hiding in plain sight nowadays. So again, let's take a look at five more things abandoned by Disney. Disney Quest, Walt Disney World. Hello, I'm Michael Eisner, and tonight I'm taking a Jungle Cruise. Actually, it's the virtual Jungle Cruise at Disney Quest the world's first indoor interactive theme park. Disney Quest was a chain of interactive theme parks that opened on June 19, 1998, as a major expansion of downtown Disney and Walt Disney World. It was created as a way to bring the magic of Disney to many people that didn't have the chance to visit the parks. The plan was to open a Disney Quest in major cities of the US, like Chicago, Baltimore, and Philadelphia. It was also a way for Disney to experiment with VR technology and learn about it before anyone else and bring it to the parks. Hello, I'm Michael Eisner. I'm here in the virtual reality studio where Disney Imagineers are creating a whole new world of storytelling. Tiny TV screens inside this headset actually allow you to step into the world of Aladdin on a magic carpet ride. It's called virtual because it's a world which only exists inside a computer. Reality, because unlike film or television, you see not just what's on the screen, or what's above, around, and behind you. And you control when you return to the real world. I wonder where the exit is. Oh well, welcome to the wonderful world of Disney. Disney Quest was a five-floor building full of VR interactive attractions. Some of them were loosely based on real-life Disney Parks attractions and arcade games. It had a Pirates of the Caribbean attraction that was more like a battle game a Jungle Cruise attraction that took us back to the prehistoric era to see some dinosaurs, a Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blaster attraction which was a combination of bumper cars and a shooting game. There was also a Cyberspace Mountain attraction where guests could create a roller coaster and then ride it using advanced motion simulators, Aladdin's Magic Carpet Ride where guests could ride the magic carpet through Agrabah collecting gems to find the genie and many many more attractions. Disney Quest was a success and so, on June 16, 1999, a second Disney Quest opened in Chicago. Disney also announced that Disney Quest would also soon be coming to Philadelphia, Toronto, and Disneyland. So what happened? Well, Chicago's Disney Quest was not as successful as Disney would have wanted. People were not so happy with paying an entry fee to an arcade that was somewhat focused for a younger audience. There wasn't enough tourism for the place to succeed either. So, due to low attendance, it closed permanently on September 4th, 2001. And the idea of opening other Disney quests was forgotten. On 30th, 2015, Disney announced that the Walt Disney World location would close down in 2016 as part of the continued redevelopment of Downtown Disney into Disney Springs. The location would become a new NBA experience attraction, left abandoned for a while. Even if Disney Quest became outdated, it is pretty sad to see it devastated and falling apart like this. What once was a place full of people running around, playing, drawing, having fun, became a dark, sad, and broken place. After a while, the building was demolished, and all traces of Disney Quest disappeared. The People Mover and Rocket Rods, Disneyland. The first People Mover installation is already in daily operation at Disneyland. On peak days, it carries nearly 40,000 passengers. The People Mover was, and still is, one of guests' favorite attractions, even years after it closed down. After all, it was a perfect example of how Walt loved to innovate and come up with new ideas. I believe we can build a community that more people will talk about and come to look at than any other area in the world. Disneyland introduced the People Mover in 1967. This D-ticket attraction gave guests a scenic 16-minute tour all around Tomorrowland, starting at Tomorrowland's entrance. 
Going into the adventure through inner space building, past the shoppers in the character shop, then going in and out of the carousel theater, near the submarine lagoon, through the waiting area of the Circarama Theater, and, as of the late 70s, inside of Space Mountain. One of the coolest parts of the People Mover was that the little blue, red, and yellow cars weren't motorized themselves. Instead, the tracks were motorized. Power is supplied from a series of motors embedded in the track, completely independent of the cars. Sadly, in 1995, the People Mover was replaced by Rocket Rods. Imagineers took the People Mover and tried to change it into a new thrill ride that promised to complete in three minutes the course that took the People Mover 16 minutes. What did you think of the Rocket Rods? Yeah, this is pure excitement. I want to do it again. But as we've said before, the ride didn't work correctly because there was very little money on the budget for this attraction, and the People Movers tracks were not changed. These tracks were not prepared for the high speed and energy that the rocket rods needed. So the ride had to slow down at every turn and then speed up again. So of course, the ride broke down constantly. It was also closed down and opened many times for refurbishment until September 25th, 2000, when it closed down for the last time and didn't open again. After the rocket rods closed down, everyone wondered what would happen to the tracks. The answer was nothing. The tracks would remain intact. We can still see them all around Tomorrowland going in and out of the buildings. Many people want the people mover back, but there are many reasons why this can't happen. So why are the tracks still there? Well, one of the reasons is that it would be very expensive to remove the tracks, and Tomorrowland would have to be closed for a long time. So maybe, when and if Tomorrowland gets a complete overhaul, Disney might remove the tracks. Mine Train Through Nature's Wonderland Formerly known as Rainbow Caverns Mine Train, from 1956 to 1959, Mine Train Through Nature's Wonderland opened on May 28, 1960. This attraction featured a train that took guests through Bear Country, Beaver Valley, the Living Desert, and Rainbow Caverns, where you could see mighty waterfalls cascading off Cascade Peak, Beavers building a dam, brown bears swimming and resting, cacti resembling humans, balancing rocks, the devil's paint pots, which were bubbling pots of mud in all kinds of colors, geysers shooting water high into the desert air, and the famous colorful glowing waterfalls inside Rainbow Caverns. This train's loading platform was in the western mining town of Rainbow Ridge, and it had 204 animated animals in their natural habitat. This attraction was amazing, but sadly, due to the growing popularity of thrill rides, Nature's Wonderland was closed to build a new awesome attraction, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, which opened in 1979. But not all was gone, because Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is actually pretty similar to Nature's Wonderland, reusing the Rainbow Ridge Town as a loading area, having a tribute to the Rainbow Caverns, and of course, having a runaway train as a ride vehicle. After the ride was closed, many elements of it remained. You can see the tunnel and fish from Bear Country while you walk along Big Thunder Trail, then you can find the tunnel that led to the train to Cascade Peak, all boarded up with tracks leading up to it. And if you board the Mark Twain Riverboat, you get to see lots of abandoned things left from this attraction. The abandoned track can still be seen, with a large boulder sitting on it. You can also see the tunnel the railroad passed through on its way to Bear Country from the back. And what's left of Cascade Peak, which was removed in 1998 due to instability. And up until 2010, Guests could see an old engine and two carts that used to be part of the attraction. But in 2010, Disney Imagineers decided to remove the engine and cars and place the boulders we can see now. The Skyway, Disneyland The Disneyland Skyway opened in June 1956 as two attractions, the Skyway to Tomorrowland and the Skyway to Fantasyland. This attraction took riders back and forth between Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. In 1959, a major renovation came to the park that brought us the submarine voyage, the Disneyland monorail, the motorboat cruise, and the Matterhorn. The problem was that the Matterhorn was planned to be built in the path where the Skyway passed. So to solve this problem, the Skyway closed in late 1957, its tallest tower was demolished, and the Matterhorn bobsled was built instead. But when the Matterhorn opened in 1959, the Skyway came back also. This time, it passed through two large openings on each side of the mountain. The Matterhorn also served as the center support tower for the cables. The Skyway continued being one of guests' favorite methods of transportation in Disneyland until 1994 when it was announced that it would close after 38 years. ...officials to shut down the Skyway gondolas. After 38 years and millions of passengers, the Alpine theme ride is closing on Wednesday. Why would Disney close such a popular attraction? Well, there's a myth that says the ride closed because a guest died when he fell off the gondola. 
But that's not true. On April 17, 1994, a 30-year-old man supposedly fell 20 feet from one of the Skyway cabins and landed in a tree near the Alice in Wonderland attraction. He didn't die, but he was treated for minor injuries and released. He actually filed a lawsuit against Disney, but before it went to trial. The lawsuit was dismissed when it was discovered that the guests jumped from the gondola instead of falling. The real reason for its closure was attributed to metal fatigue. Stress cracks had developed inside the Matterhorn Tower battery supports, and the only way to do maintenance was to open up the Matterhorn to do work on it. So the holes in the Matterhorn were partially filled in, and the Skyway's cable and supports were dismantled within weeks. The Tomorrowland Skyway station was also removed soon after the Skyway's closure, but the Fantasyland Skyway station remained intact. The sidewalks up to the station were simply chained off from guests, and the chalet remained empty. This area was supposed to be turned into a dining area attached to the nearby Village House restaurant. But years passed and the forest started to take over the area. And the Chile remained like that for more than 20 years until 2015 when Bob Iger announced the 14 acre Star Wars themed land would be coming to Disneyland. The space where the chalet was located was needed and so on May 11, 2016, the city of Anaheim issued a permit for the demolition of 5,132 square feet for the Skyway building. And now all that remains of the Skyway are lost, except for the stairs that were used to get to the Tomorrowland station. What do you guys think? Any other abandoned places you would like us to talk about? Let us know in the comments! Before we end the video, we would like to remind you that this video is being sponsored by Florida Candles. Go check out their page, and don't forget to use our code to get 20% off your entire purchase. They've got some delicious theme park smells. Thank you so much, and see you next time.